welcome to God's Word for us that come. Ghana's online Christian station. Be blessed as you listen to messages on the site. We are, we've been doing some series of faith teachings, violent faith. A lot of teachings have gone around it. And then we, 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 we took on another switch. And we talked about we talked about contending for your faith. Say amen. And then last two weeks, we did faith and adversity. It was very powerful. It's on tape, it's on podcast. Please listen to it if you were not here. And today we want to talk about faith and holiness. Faith and holiness. Say amen. Your faith versus your holiness. And it's going to be a bumpy ride. So just fasten your seat belt. So that when we go on a bumpy road, you'll be comfortable. Say amen. <laughs> and I think that by now we are all used to bumpy rides on the messages. Say amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, uh, I'll be very simple and, you know, teach simple. As led by the Spirit. I want you to turn with me to the book of Deuteronomy, uh, chapter number 7. Chapter number seven. We also want to welcome Reverend Stanley back from uh, the U.S. We want to strengthen our U.S. churches. And we glorify God. Say amen. Brother Stanley, you are welcome back home. Oh, Deuteronomy. Did I say Deuteronomy? Okay. Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Uh, the white people say Deuteronomy. Uh, chapter number 7 and I'm reading from verse number 1 the Bible says when the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it and hath cast out many nations before thee the Hittites, the Gekashites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Hevites and the Jebusites seven nations greater than and mightier than thou and when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Neither shalt thou make marriages, marriages with them. Thy daughter shall not, uh, thou shalt not give unto his son and his daughter thou shalt not take unto thy son. Take note, thy daughter shall not give unto his son, nor his daughter shall thou take unto thy son. For they will turn away thy son following thee, that they may serve other God. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. Hallelujah. But thou shalt ye deal with them, ye shall destroy their altars and break down their images and cut down their grooves and burn their graven images with fire. Verse 6. Take note of verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor chose you because you were more in number than any people. For you were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, and because he will keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, had the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out with the house of out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Say amen. I like to emphasize verse 6. He said, Because you have been deemed, for thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all the people that are upon the earth and the face of the earth. Hallelujah. So you can see that when the, when the Israelites came out of Egypt, he told them, look, you are a peculiar people. 
You are a special people unto me. You are also a holy people. I don't want you to enter into covenant relationship and into marriages and things with the Hittite, the Gegesites, the Jebusites, and all that because you were a special uh, people unto me. And then Peter captured it. It is writing to the church. First Peter chapter 2, uh, 9 to 12. 1 Peter chapter 2, 9 to 12, the Bible said something very well. It says, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, and holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Say amen. And then the verse, they said, which in time past uh, you were not a people, but now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Hallelujah. It goes on to say, dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. Hallelujah. And then the verse said, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles uh, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers they may by your good works which they shall behold or see glorify God in the day of visitation. Say amen. So, so the Bible sees the Christian as a uh, a holy people, uh, as a, a peculiar people, as people that have been chosen. Go back to verse 10. He said, the verse 10 says, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. And verse 11 says, uh, dearly beloved, I beseech you, I plead with you, I beg of you, as strangers, Bible sees us as strangers on this earth. And as pilgrims, people who are passing through, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. Because what? You are a holy nation. Say amen. You are what? A holy nation. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 14 verse 2, he repeated it to the people. He said, for thou art an holy people. First of all, a holy nation, then an holy people unto the Lord thy God. And the Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all the nations that are upon the face of the earth. Hallelujah. Are you there? In the Hebrews chapter 12 verse 12, the writer of Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews made something very clear. He said, wherefore, wherefore lift up the, lift up the hands which hang down. Your hands which were hanging down, lift them up and, and, and then your feeble knees. Then he says, and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. That he goes on to say, follow peace. Everybody say, follow peace. Follow peace with all men. Don't be a quarrelsome person, but follow peace with all men. And holiness. Say it. And holiness. Without which no man shall see the Lord. Hallelujah. Follow peace with all men. And, uh, and holiness for without which no man shall see the Lord. It means that if you are a child of God, you are born into the family of God, and you are not holy, you don't pursue holiness, you are not interested in being a holy child of God, then you may not see God. You may not see God. If your whole life is embedded in filthiness of the soul, foolishness of life, going about doing a lot of silly things, and you are not mindful of holiness, and you are not pursuing holiness, you will not see God. And 
scripture is not ambiguity with it. Straight away. So, your life must pursue holiness. Holiness in thoughts. Holiness in the mind. Holiness with your hands. Holiness with your tongue. Holiness in what you do. What you behold. What you see. What you are involved in. You must pursue holiness. Without which... No man, it means when they say no man, it means that whether you are bishop, reverend, brother, uh, president, vice, whatever, no man shall see God if you don't pursue holiness. Say amen. I don't fear you, I'm just telling you straight away. I don't fear you at all. Holiness. So that look at your life. Are you living? You see, you cannot be. Somebody said, somebody says that it is not possible for a man to be holy to the standard of God. Yes, I agree. You cannot be holy to the standard of God because that is why your attempt to become holy and righteousness is like a funeral. But you see, God must see some genuine effort. Pursue it. Work at it to become holy. Work at it. Say amen. Oh, are you there? Yeah. Say amen. Hey, I forgot to acknowledge that uh, last week, my birthday, somebody gave me a nice suit. What do you think? <laughs> give me a nice tie. And then another person brought me some nice shiny shoes. So I've worn it for the people so that if you are here, you give it to me. I'm wearing it so that you have the shirt, the tie, were all gift for me for my birthday. So I'm um, do you still have a birthday? <laughs> <laughs> birthday dressing. So I hear you, Pastor. Is, is it nice? <laughs> okay. uh, what's his name? <laughs> Laura is dead. I'm trying to let his dance, bar, but it's not working very well. First Corinthians three sixteen. The Bible says something very important. First Corinthians 3.16, the Bible said, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God? Know ye not that ye are what? The temple of God. And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Next verse. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. It's in the Bible. For the temple of God is what? Holy. So this temple is in reference to you, to your body. Not this building. This building is sitting here. Anything can happen here. But now the Bible said, when the veil in the temple was rent in twain, the presence, the shekinah, the cupboard of the glory of God left. And now it, it came to dwell in us. So the Holy Spirit now dwells in our physical body, which is now God's temple. See, I hear you, my pastor. So put the scripture there again. He said, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy. Which temple ye are? Next verse. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. Don't think you are smart. You know things. Say amen. Yeah, don't think you are whatever. Be a fool before God. The Bible is scripture. It's simple. Say amen. If any man among you, uh, 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 among you, seemed to be wise in this world, there are some people who feel that they are very smart and they are very wise, and that they are smarter and wiser than God. Humble yourself and know that you are the custodian of God's glory. Let nobody deceive himself. 
But the person who is tempted will let him become a fool that he may be wise. The Bible says, look at the next verse. It says, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. Say amen. For it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. Hallelujah. The verse 20. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. There are people who have invented a lot of things into our world who feel they are smart by the Lord. You see, when you follow the wisdom of this world, the lust of this world, the pride of this world, when you follow certain things of this world, you will become unwise at the end. You will say that you became a fool rather you think you are smart but rather see yourself as nothing before God and he will make you very wise say I hear you my pastor let me show you another scripture first Corinthians chapter 6 first Corinthians chapter 6 and I'm reading from verse number 9 to 20 9 to 20 9 to 20. It says, Know ye not that the unrighteous, the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate nor abuses of themselves with mankind. Know you know that the unrighteous shall not be. He said, be not deceived. Neither, you see, there is a difference between somebody who fornicates as a sin and repents of it and somebody who is a professional fornicator. If you're a young guy here and then you see a girl that you know and you ask the girl to move from her house and come and stay with you and you haven't married the girl, you are a fornicator if you are staying with the girl. You are not, you are not committing a sin of fornication but you have become a fornicator. You are staying with the girl and you are cooking and eating and drinking and sleeping and doing bad things. Both of you can easily end up in hell. So those of you who have gone to collect girls into your house and you are sleeping with them and coming to church with them, as at now, if the trumpet sounds, you will make it. You, you, you don't make it. You haven't married the girl you haven't done knocking, you haven't done engagement, and you the girl too, your mind is small. So you have moved from your father's house into the house of the brother because of money. And they are giving you chop money. They are giving you a car. And then you are going to church and come and sing songs and go back. The guy comes to drop you. And then go back. You have become a fornicator. You are not, you have lost, they have taken eraser. And they have erased your name from the Lamb's Book of Life. Because you are fornicating. Say, hey. Today, I decided that I would be a good boy. <laughs> because of my birthday, I, I, I'm trying to be simple and very, very humble. <laughs> See, man? But the truth is the truth. It is my job to tell you that what you are doing is called fornication. And the Bible is saying that fornicators, 
shall not make it. Whether you pay tight, you support cash the royal world, you cannot bribe God with your money. You can be close to the pastor and still go to hell. I can lay hand on you and still go to hell. You can come to the altar and worship and cry. If you are still staying with the boy, you are fornicating. Mm. Idolaters. Those who are in church but still practice idol worship. If you are still pouring libation and calling on ancestral spirit, you are an idolater. You can't make it to heaven. Adultery. Somebody who is married, but you have rented an apartment for two girls and you service them. You go there here and there. You are an adulteress. You see the Bible? I'm not talking about falling into adultery. That one is different. Where you, fall, you make a mistake and fall into adultery. I'm talking about where you are now doing it officially. Those who have left, they are, they are not nice to your wife. You are not whatever. You don't sleep with your wife. You don't give anything. But now, 90% of your attention is to a certain girl staying in a two-bedroom house somewhere. And you go there. You are an adulterer. You, you don't make it to heaven. The clapping is not much, but it's okay. Amen. Look at it. Let's go. Look at it. Go. He said, adulteress said, adult, and then, no effeminate. An effeminate is somebody who is a man, but you are behaving like a woman. Hello. <laughs> And you have a male friend. And you are having, you are practicing gay with that friend. You are having anal sex with the brother. You will not make it. I hear you, my pastor. You see, what I'm teaching, the world will not teach you. It is the church that will teach you. Because you, you can't hear it from radio stations. So, effeminate. And the Bible says, and abuses of themselves with mankind. When they say abusers of themselves, Maka, what does it mean? It means you are, you are a lesbian, a gay, you are using gadgets. You are practicing very uh, abusive things. You are chaining girls in a room. There are people who have gadgets and chains. They chain people. I hear you, my pastor. Abusers of themselves. You see, look at what the Bible, the Bible is one missing where it says, Know ye not that the unrighteous, and this letter was not written for the people on the street. This letter was written for the, for the church. That it should be read in the church. Will not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived. Tell somebody. Don't deceive yourself. Fornicators. Idol worshippers. People who are in church serving God, but they still go to their hometown to go and practice idol worship. To give food to idols, to pay money, to perform rituals, to take your children through some demonic rites. That is why I was very sad. Very, very, very sad that uh, the couple who lost their 12, uh, 12 year old took their daughter to the village. Do not take your children to some of these places because you are not more of that kingdom. 
You are no more of that kingdom. So if you don't take care, the spiritually vulnerable one will be hurt by these people. Don't carry your children to do rituals. In the name of earth, we are here before the church came. And do not allow people, grandmothers, grandfathers, an old lady whose tooth have all been broken to come to your house and pour libation. It is idolatry. You cannot practice this. You cannot, pra you cannot travel to your village on festivals and be part of the demonic festivities and paint your face with other things and carry a bowl with water with leaves in it and your daughter is shaking. And you are an elder of the church and your daughter is carrying water in public with all her breasts and everything exposed. And you are committed idolatry. It's wrong. You are a peculiar people. You are a royal priesthood. You are a chosen generation. The Bible says, for come out from amongst them and be separated. Faith and holiness. You are of faith, but you must pursue holiness. Say amen. There are people who are still steep in traditional practices. That we should not, the fact that we are Christians, that's it without, we should throw our traditional practices away. Which traditional practices? Some of them are good. Some of them are demonic. Let's preserve the ones that are good. But the ones that are demonic, that we have to go into shrines, into things, eating, uh, drinking, of blood, putting blood on your tongue of an animal, and somebody come in and, 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 and throws powder and stuff on you, it's demonic. Going to a shrine to go and shake them when recite some poems there is demonic. Going to roll at the beach seven times on the left, seven times on your right is demonic. Taking your children that they do things for them. That if you don't do this for them, if they don't sit on this stool, if they don't swallow an egg, if they don't do this, thing, if they don't go through puber puberty, right? Whatever that, it will not be well with them. These are all demonic things. It's idolatry. Say amen. And adultery. And then let's go forward. There are a few there. A few there. It says, no thieves. Thieves. People who are in proper positions and they are using their position to steal money. Stealing. Thieves. Stealers of government money. Stealers of road construction, hospital. The hospital is in somebody's pocket. People who sign contracts and then and then they steal part of the money. They don't have empathy. They don't care about bad roads, bad hospitals. There are people dying in our rural house because they lack basic things like gloves, needles, syringes, uh, medicines. Because a chunk part of the money has been stolen and it's in the pocket of somebody. You don't make it to heaven. I don't care how close you are to the pastor. If you're a thief, it's in the Bible. Put it there. Put it there. Yeah, I want to make sure that my members hear it. He said, No thieves, no covetous. Any brain. You are very covetous. Anything that somebody has, you want it. Any car a brother is driving, you want that car. You have 17 cars in your house, and still you want more. It's covetousness, it's witchcraft. I, I, I don't fear you. Stealers. Those of you who are here and you are in politics. Those of you who are here, you are in governmental positions. Those of you in strategic positions where money is passing your, 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 your whatever and you are stealing. You don't make it to heaven. 
covetous, nor drunkards. People who are in this church who are born again, not only are they drinking for medicinal purposes and things, but you know, there are so, you know, like the French people say, a glass of wine will circulate your heart and so many things, medical. There are a lot of medicinal because your body contains some fluid. The fluid is partly, there's a certain percentage of alcohol that you, your body needs for the circulation. There, there, there's the medicinal parts. But I'm talking about the one that you are drinking vodka and getting drunk. Whiskey. Akbadeshi. Apio. Ogoglo. Because if you shot of blood and they prescribe duro for you, when you drink duro, duro contains a certain percentage of alcohol. Which means that alcohol is necessary for the body. So that's why they didn't say drink, but they said drunkards. Worldly parties and go and get drunk so that you can't even come to church on Sunday. You are drunk and vomiting. Somebody said, well, if this is the way you are going to preach, then I don't think I want to come to this church. That's what? Drunkards. Revelous. No extortionists. No extortionists. See, man, shall I inherit the okay. people who are extorting things that don't belong to them? See the Bible. But such were some of you. But ye are washed, and ye are sanctified, ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus by His Spirit. Thank God for the blood of Jesus that is still available to cleanse us all from unrighteousness so that the day the trumpet shall sound you will make it to heaven all of us together and so shall we be with the Lord for the Bible says in the book of Thessalonians look for that scripture for our calling is not a calling unto unrighteousness what the number 1 Thessalonians 4 7 put it there he said, for our calling is not a calling unto unrighteousness. For our calling is a calling unto what? Holiness. For God has not called us unto uncleanliness, but unto holiness. Because we are a peculiar people. We are a chosen generation. Say amen. So look at your lifestyle. Look at the people you hang around with. Look at where you go. Look at what you do. Look at who you hang around with. Because they who do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Say, I hear you, my pastor. How many want to go to heaven? How many want to go to hell? First Peter Chapter 1, verse 13. Look at what the Bible says. Wherefore, I'm going to all the way to verse 20. Wherefore, get up the loins of your mind. Be sober and hope to the end of the grace that is, that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former last in your ignorance. Because in time past, there were things that we did ignorantly. But look at what the Bible says. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of what? Conversation. All manner. Say all manner. The Lord is cleansing all of us. Because it is written, be ye holy for I am holy. So there is a call unto holiness. Next verse. And if ye call on the Father who without respect of persons, generated according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. 
In what fear? Not fear as in kakai, but reverentially. Say amen. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, the Bible said, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamp without blemish and without spot. Verse 20, finally, it said, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Say, I hear you. In this last time for you. Say amen. Sometimes when you become addicted to something that is unholy for a long time, it takes the power of God to break that addiction. May God give you the grace to pull yourself away from something that is leading you to perdition. May you have the grace. That is why the Bible says something very, 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 very dramatic and very serious. He said, if your right hand is causing you to sin, you know what, you know the prescription they give to it? He said, take a machete and cut it off. It's a metaphor. It means that it will hurt to cut your arm off. But it will help you to enter the kingdom of God. Is it possible for you to take a knife and cut your finger off? It means that what you must cut off will be very painful. If they have rented a two-bedroom apartment for you, they have bought a car for you. You know, you are driving, you, take, you go to Dubai and come, and you are driving, hello, 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 hello. And then you come to our service, are preaching that that type of lifestyle will take you to. Is it easy for you to say, please, I don't want to stay in this two-bedroom anymore. Uh, please come and take your car keys. Please, uh, all the wigs and things, no, come and take all the wigs and everything. Is it easy? For you to hand over all those things and say goodbye to this guy. It's not going to be very easy. One lady came to me after service last two weeks when I finished preaching. She said, Reverend, this is my first time of coming to your church. You preach me completely. I said, Really? She said, Yes. Look at me. I don't want to boast that I'm pretty, but you can tell that I'm very pretty. And it's truly, she was very pretty. Height, everything, you know. He said, look, I was a mistress to this guy. Rented an apartment for me. Blessings and everything. He said, the Lord spoke to me that if I don't leave this place, I will end up in hell. Reverend, I give everything up. I gave the house, the car, everything. I gave it up. I gave it up. Daddy, I gave it up. I have to go and look. He said, he said, I have to go and look for a job. I have to go and start all over again. But then he said to me, he said, Daddy, glory be to God. As I'm here, I've got my own car. I've got my own business I'm doing. I don't depend on anybody. I'm going to get married properly. Which means that it is possible if you can just act by faith. And believe God to come out of darkness into light. Sometimes it is, it is the enemy deceiving that if you live this lifestyle, you go down. But it's possible for God to take care of you. Say amen. God will take care of you. When skies are dark, when skies are blue, when you have been, when you have been stripped of all the things, there are guys here who don't, who are not marrying young girls. The reason being that they are having serious affair with heavy mama. There is a woman 
And this woman is the one taking care of you. So all your she, she you are doing on the compound. Oh, there is a big woman behind it. That is why you don't want to marry these young ladies who are here. One gentleman was in this church. He's no more here. This guy, this guy was in love with some heavy mama. The guy was saying that. He said, Daddy, the woman can have sex with me until I collapse. Then, then they will pour water on me and revive me and they will continue again. <laughs> she and her friends, they will pour water on me and revive me for me to continue again. <laughs> These are sexual perverts. These women, they don't have regular husbands. They thrive on young, young guys. He said, they will sleep with me and I'll collapse. The wife left him because of these women. Heavy mama. Young guys who are here, who is sponsoring you? The Porsche car you are driving, who bought it? Your lifestyle, your chains and things. Say amen. Heavy mama. There are guys here who don't have fiancés and things. You have some foreign guys who are, who are your friends. You go and meet them in some gay bars. And they are doofing to feel you. There are some people who are here who are wearing pampas. If you like, challenge me. Remove your trousers, let's see. Remove your shorts, let's see. What are you not wearing pampas? The reason I know is that there was a guy who was here one day. I was preaching on this, and he came to me and said, Daddy, I'm wearing pampas. I said, Why? Then he told me the clique he belongs to and what they do to him. Then he gave me the names of the guys. Some of them are politicians, some of them are musicians. Some of the musicians, they come here to come and sing. Their names were on the list. So I said, what did they do to you? What he told me, I cannot say it on the microphone. Then he said, <laughs> he said, daddy, if I don't run away, they, these guys will kill me. So he ran. So I said, I don't know where he is. Because he came and gave his life to Christ. He, he, said, he removed it and showed me the pampas. He said, daddy, it's like a, a, a cartel. Once you fall into the net, you can't come out. These are regular guys in the public domain. But insidiously, they are gays. They have wives and their wives are young guys. Come out from amongst them and be separated. I didn't start any, so I want to close now. Let me read a scripture to you, then I close. So people are happy I'm going to close because they don't want me to go further. It's all right, I understand. Second Corinthians 7, 1 to 4, I close. Second Corinthians 7, 1 to 4. He said, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all what? Filthiness of the flesh and spirit. Perfecting holiness. In the fear of God. Say amen. Receive us. We have. He said receive us. We have wronged no man. We have corrupted no man. We have defrauded no man. He said I speak this to you. I speak not this to condemn you. For I have said before that. Ye are in our hearts. To die and live with you. Say amen. Great is my boldness of speech towards you. Great is my glory of you. I am filled with comfort. I am exceeding joyful in all your, in all our tribulations. That means that Paul wrote such hard letters that I have read. He himself could feel that the, the hardness of the letter. But he said, I'm not writing these things to condemn you. But I'm writing these things so that we will come out of this tribulation. And to perfect holiness in the fear of God. God bless you. I love you all.
Thank you, Jesus. We believe you've been blessed by this sermon. For inquiries, please call plus two three three two six seven six seven six zero five five plus two three three two six seven six seven six zero five five or send an email to info at God's word for us dot com. Info at God's word for us dot com. Yeah.